10 years ago, our price per call per minute was 50 paise, and today it is 3 paise. The price of our data was 287 bucks a GB and is today 9.87 rupees a GB. Today we have with us the Honorable Minister of Communication, Mr. Jyoti Raditya Sindhya. He has been a key face in driving reforms in telecom, aviation and infrastructure agencies. Under his leadership, we have already seen some of the massive changes in the 5G and in the policy changes and obviously the step towards Make in India. Today we will be talking about some of the important developments that have been happening in the Indian telecom industries. To name a few, Starlink. First of all, thank you for taking out the time. It's been a pleasure. Very nice to be on board with you, Ashish. Thank you. So, there is a lot of buzz about Starlink and you have already stated that Starlink has already got the uh, licenses and approvals. So, how close are we to the formal launch and how important it is for the country? So, let me take your second uh, question first, Ashish. Uh, I think uh, SATCOM is uh, imperative for the country. Uh, SATCOM is a technology that is no longer tomorrow's technology. It is today's technology. Uh, I th uh, and I, in that light, I think it's important for India, which has now transformed itself from being a follower of technology to a leader of technology, uh, to make sure that we adopt uh, uh, state-of-the-art technologies in our country. I've always said, Ashish, that uh, we followed the world on 4G, we marched with the world on 5G, we will lead the world on 6G. So it is imperative that we adopt SATCOM, which is why under Prime Minister's uh, uh, guidance uh, in terms of being the leader of technology, uh, we have today given out three licenses, one for Geo, one for OneWeb, and now one for uh, Starlink. Uh, uh, it's my job as Telecom Minister to make sure that we introduce every technology in our country, thereby giving choice to our customers. And second, pr uh, ensure that we promote a competitive environment uh, such that the customer always has a choice. And that's the mission behind which we've taken all those actions. Uh, Starlink in particular, because your question has been posed with regard to Starlink, has been given a UL, a unified license in June. Uh, they have received their in-space authorization in the month of July. Uh, they now need to uh, comply with four or five pending issues uh, after which they can commence service. So they need to get their uh, approval for their SATCOM gateways, uh, they need to identify their points of presence, they need to get their uh, spectrum, uh, they need to get license uh, approvals for their networking equipment that they're going to set up. And once they comply with all of those, they can certainly start business and I am in favor of them starting. Uh, any of them starting business sooner rather than later, but that decision and the alacrity of their response is in their court. Okay, so as you mentioned, competitiveness is important. There was a time when there were a choice for a consumer to, you know, just opt for a SIM card, which is a Tata Docomo or probably a Vodafone. And now majorly it has been a two horse race with majorly Geo and Airtel having majority of the market. So, are you guys planning to do anything just to ensure the competitiveness in terms of, uh, let's say, a fair choice or... So, I think it's important how you would uh, define competitiveness uh, and, I, and I would want you to take a global view when you pose that question. So, let me give you the, what the position is on a global scale. There are very few countries in the world that can boast of four telcos providing service. There are view, very few countries in the world that can pose, uh, boast of any telco in their country providing service to, let's take the example of BSNL, 90 million customers, right? Yes. For you, that may be a very small piece of the market. But on a global scale, 90 million customers is a huge market. Uh, there are very few countries in the world that will today say that 10 years ago, our price per call per minute was 50 paise and today it is 3 paise. There are very few countries in the world 
that can today say that the price of our data was 287 bucks a GB and is today 9.87 rupees a GB, which translates into 11 cents. The average price per GB of data across the world today is $2.49. So where are we? We are at 5% of the global average. Okay. That to me is the definition of a competitive environment. Okay, again, uh, a counter question. So basically, Absolutely. <laughs> recently the telecos have uh, hiked the prices, right? So given most of the individuals living in India, have a decent amount of wage. So, which means that the telecom operators who are high, uh, hiking the prices can be a problem for those particular demographics. So, is there anything that you are uh, doing to ensure affordability or the for the last mile user also? So, Ashish, that really depends on your Vista, right? Uh, and to answer your counter question with a counter answer. Your Vista is just the pure amount of percentage point of hike. And you will say to me that telcos have increased prices by 11% or 15% or 16%, right? My job as minister is to see what the price per call is or what the price per GB of data is, right? And please tell me an economy in the world that prices voice at three paise per minute or please tell me any economy in the world that prices data at 8.97 rupees per minute and mind you i have a caveat the caveat is the following please also tell me any economy in the world that has today deployed 5g in their economy put up close to 4.58 lakh towers put in a capex of close to four and a half lakh crores which you as probably with some economic and business background will understand that there is an amortization for that capex that hits your bottom line on a PNL basis, mm. right? And you cannot expect companies to continually put in capex to improve the quality of service and bring in new technology and not look at a remunerative number in terms of their top line. So again, uh, telecom related scams, for example, let's say from fake calls to SMS frauds are on the rise. Well, Sanchar, Sati and other initiatives are commendable. What is the next plan to curb those rising So shares? it's, a, it's a, Ashish, let me tell you, it's a uh, continual race. Because as you'll understand, when there is new innovation in technology, that innovation in technology brings about tremendous dividends for humankind, for you, for me, for all of us. And we've seen the information revolution over the last 10 to 15 years, right? Uh, but along with that, it also always opens an avenue for unscrupulous people to do unscrupulous deeds. And it is our job at DOT, along with our service providers, and along with citizens like you and me, to continuously wage this war against those unscrupulous elements. And so the first thing that we've done at DOT is we put together a digital intelligence platform that puts all the stakeholders to who will check this misuse of telecom resources on one single platform. And what do I mean by that? So the, it means the DOT, it means the Ministry of Home Affairs, it means law enforcement agencies, it means uh, police forces of 32 states, it means 570 private and public sector financial banks all on one platform so that there is complete transparency in terms of every single consumer. And if I do something wrong at one end, my wrongdoing will register all across the spectrum and I will get blocked all over. Secondly, you talked about the Sanchar Sati portal, which has been a tremendous success. And why? Because it is a citizen led initiative where Aam Admi ne is yud mein apne aap ko shamil kar diya hai. And so we've blocked close to about 1.36 crore phones where they've exceeded the amount of SIM numbers that they can have. We've blocked close to about 1.75 crore phones that are either not a certain person's number through this portal. 
Uh, we have recovered close to 5 lakh stolen phones and taken it back to the original owner through this portal. Third, we are also using AI and we have got a new app that the DOT has come up with called Astra where we have seen how multiple users have used uh, fraudulent technology and gotten many more numbers in place. We have disconnected 82 lakh numbers based on that. And finally, we have introduced uh, a software uh, called Kyor. It is the calling identification outrooming registry where earlier on your phone, you would get uh, many phone calls that looked like an Indian number, but it was actually an international call coming in. And through that Kyor software, uh, people who are spoofing through international calls, close to about 1.35 crore calls per day were blocked by us. And today all of those gateways are blocked and the number of spoof calls coming into India have reduced by 97% to only 3.3 lakh calls a day. Finally, we have also introduced something called uh, the financial FRI, fraud risk indicator. Uh, and they are all in financial institutions and everyone is on board where we have labeled um, Ashish or Jyotiraditya as high risk or very high risk or medium risk. And we have had close to about 3 lakh uh, accounts frozen based on that because of my or your capability to do a financial fraud and close to about 1.5 lakh uh, debit card and credit cards frozen as well. So, we are on the prowl, quote unquote, and we, it is our job to ensure that we stop every fraudulent transactions from taking place. Some will inevitably slip through the cracks, but we are at it, let me assure you. So, again, we talk about Make in India. Where are we and how are we incentivizing that? So, that is a very good question, Ashish, and it is a very pertinent question because uh, I really believe, as Prime Minister said, we need to move from the services paradigm to really the product paradigm. And that is why we brought in place the, a scheme called the PLI scheme, hmm. Productively Linked Incentive Scheme. Uh, and it gives incentives for those that produce in India. Uh, there is Atma Nirbharta as part of that. And I am very glad to report through you to our viewers that we have received close to about 4,305 4, crores worth of investment. Uh, since uh, the telecom uh, PLI has been in place, uh, which has been about a year, year and a half, uh, we've, which has resulted in close to 85,000 crores worth of new sales, incremental sales. Of that 85,000 crores worth of incremental sales, almost 16,500 crores have been exports. And that has resulted in close to creation of uh, 28,000 new jobs. And so, for the first time in India, because of the PLI, you have seen companies like Cisco, Nokia, Ericsson either manufacturing on their own in India or tying up with an Indian company uh, and producing in India. Uh, and that has opened the doors for product innovation to start. Uh, I have now brought in a new element in that and I have introduced an incentive for design-led PLI. So, if you as a firm are not only producing in India, but you are designing in, in India, then there is a 1% incentive that has been introduced by the telecom ministry for design-led manufacturing in India. So, we do not want only the manufacturing to take place here. We want higher value uh, uh, manufacturing happening here, higher Indian content happening, local value addition happening, as well as the design part being done in India. It's been great chatting with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, this was Mr. Sindhya about what is happening inside the Indian telecom industry. Stay tuned for more information. Until then, subscribe.